In its 40 years of home rule in the District of Columbia, one name stands out and has become synonymous with the political fortunes of the District of Columbia, and that is Marion S. Barry, Jr. Born in Itabina, Mississippi on March 6, 1936, he grew up in dirt poor in the town located in the Mississippi Delta, where he and his family picked cotton and worked the fields. The family later moved to Memphis, but Barry has always carried Mississippi and his childhood experiences with him. Barry recalls holding a number of jobs as a young man, including holding down a paper route, bagging groceries, waiting tables, picking and chopping cotton. His ambition drove him to go above and beyond. Barry was a Boy Scout and the first Black Eagle Scout in Memphis. He once told a reporter, some people are destined and some are determined and I am determined. Barry enrolled in Fisk University to get a degree in chemistry, but got swept into the student movement when in February 1960, four Black students in Greensboro, North Carolina, sat down in a segregated Woodworth's lunch counter. That seemingly simple action ignited the student movement and shortly after, student representative founded the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee at Dr. King's request in Raleigh, North Carolina. Members voted Barry Snick's first national chairman. Snick's uniqueness stemmed from its focus on direct action and the push to have its members become agents of permanent and far-reaching change, as well as role models for those coming behind them. Barry served as chairman of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, worked with the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, immersed himself in sit-ins, demonstration, and other forms of civil disobedience. In 1964, Barry dropped out of grad school, just 12 credits short of a PhD in chemistry, to work in the movement full-time. He led protests against segregated facilities and fundraising and organizing in the South and in 1965 was chosen to run SNCC's Washington office. He arrived at a time when SNCC was in a state of transition. The early legal battles against segregation had been mostly won, but that did not leave members of SNCC with a sense of having won a place for themselves in mainstream white American society. So under the leadership of Stokely Carmichael, SNCC's attention turned increasingly to the issues of black pride and African politics which the rest of the movement largely ignored. In Washington, Barry continued to fight the power structure by protesting fair increases, by boycotting the bus system, and advocating for home rule. From SNCC, which he left in 1967, Barry co-founded Pride. The organization provided summer jobs for young people. Unlike other politicians, Barry built his political base in Anacostia and other parts of Ward 8 avoiding those black power brokers entrenched on 16th Street. Barry's public life four-time mayor, former member and chairman of the school board, and currently the proud city council representative of the residents of Ward 8, has come to symbolize the power, promise, and enigma that is Washington, D.C. When he ascended to power as mayor in 1978, Barry represented a new breed of black politician, brass, unapologetic, savvy, a perspective and outlook sharpened by his experience as a civil rights activist and warrior for justice. His ascension into power came on the heels of the black power movement and the scene in many eyes to be the culmination of decades long effort by blacks to attain political, social, and economic parity. Barry, a black mayor of the majority black city, attracted the best and the brightest to the District of Columbia. He was able to garner the support of a wide cross section of the city's diverse population, although he was distrusted by some whites in the upper crust of blacks. When Barry took office, it is said that the only district agency that had blacks in any significant numbers was the recorder of Dee's office. By the time Barry began serving his second term, he had brought significant numbers of blacks into city government, laid the groundwork for the development of the black middle and upper class, mandated that 35% of all city building contracts go to minority contractors, and presided over a multi-billion dollar apparatus that employed 30,000 employees. 
Barry has noted that when he came to Washington, there were certain jobs that African Americans need not have tried to apply for because the doors were firmly closed to their admittance and promotion. That included positions in finance and revenue, health, engineering, and jobs of that nature. His administration changed all of that, and soon people were moving in Ward 4 and the Gold and Silver Coasts. Barry is a consummate politician who had risen to every challenge and responded in his own unique manner to governance, gathering support across Washington and galvanizing leaders and ordinary people to work in the best interests of the city. Barry has continued to defy his critics and political convention with his finely honed political instincts and rare ability to keep a finger on the pulse in the different parts of the city and constituencies. Significant swaths of black residents east of the river regard Barry as their champion. Barry always expressed a deep desire to remake society, wage an individual and collective revolution against all the racial impulses that damaged and savaged black people. His focus for much of his mayoral terms have been on the elderly, youth, ex-offenders, the unemployed, and the downtrodden. Like Mandela, who often said he's not a saint unless you think of a saint as a sinner who keeps on trying. Barry routinely acknowledged his failings and shortcomings. Barry has lost only one election in his political career. His story is replete with triumph, tragedy, setbacks, rising, falling, and rising again with observers continually shaking their heads at this shrewd, tough, savvy politician and man of enormous charisma who always finds a way to bounce back. He never saw a fight he didn't relish and that almost always embraced a willingness to put his body, ideals, and life on the line. This unflappable political warrior Barry is an unabashed champion of poor, young people, and seniors, and one of his signature programs is the Summer Youth Employment Program, senior centers, and social programs that serve as a safety net for these populations. To the poor and working class, Barry remains a hero, their defender, a voice for the powerless, someone willing to stand up to Congress, wealthy whites and others who they see as marginalizing them and their efforts to making a living, enjoying the amenities and opportunities other residents elsewhere take for granted. This is a guy who came in and said, let's employ people who need jobs, and the door was wide open. Marion Barry is a guy who loves politics, and people. And to that end, he is a person who has made the political system work for people it would not have worked for.